G'day and welcome to another episode of Built by Dan. In today's episode, I'm going to show you what, what it took to install the rear brake assembly on my GT40. Now before we get stuck into today's episode, just want to wish everybody a happy new year. I hope you all had a, a chance to take a bit of a break as I did uh, and spend some time with your family and friends and hopefully this year brings you everything that, uh, that you wish for. For me, I'd like to try and build my YouTube channel a bit more, uh, maybe try and diversify a little bit, uh, bit beyond just the GT40 build, but I'll give you a bit of an update on how I intend to achieve that uh, in a future episode. For now, let's get on to the brake install. So before I get started with the install, I just thought I'd quickly run through the parts that I've got laid out. So we've got the wheel bearing, the handbrake caliper and the bolts to mount that to the suspension upright. We've got the dimpled and slotted brake rotor. We've got the outside um, drive shaft, input shaft, the brake pads, brake caliper, the pins and the spring for the brake pads, mounting bolts. And we've also got over here the spinner adapter hub and the bolts to mount that to the wheel bearing, which will also hold on the brake rotor. So there's not too many components in this one. Um, fingers crossed, everything works out as it should. So when it comes to mounting to the upright, you can see here, there's actually, the way it's been molded or milled, um, the brake caliper mounts on this side. And then on the other side here, on the rear, they've actually milled out a section for the handbrake lever. So the handbrake lever will mount to the back of the upright and the brake, main brake caliper will actually mount to the front of the upright on the other side three bolts here for the wheel bearing to mount to and then we go to a standard five bolt pattern on the other side to mount the brake rotor and spinner hub. I'll go set the camera up on the tripod and we'll start working on the install. So the first step of this install will be to mount the bearing onto the suspension upright. So as you can see almost shaped like a rotor, um, three bolts line them up here and bolt them in with the shoulder bolt from the rear. So they're about a 10 mil hex bolt. So that's it, just those three bolts to mount that bearing. Um, I'm going to sit the CV adapter um, inside the bearing for now, but I'm not going to install it fully uh, with split pin and everything. I just wanted to make sure that everything actually fit, but I think I'd like to actually have that loose when I go to do the axle and CV assembly. So the kit did actually come with a 36 millimeter socket for a half inch ratchet, just for that nut. So this brake rotor, it's obviously got the two different um, bolt patterns, uh, just a matter of finding the right one. It's pretty obvious, quite large diameter holes for the other one and they're actually spaced in a little bit further. Um, so just holding the brake rotor up to those bolts, it's quite obvious which one it's intended for. Now before I go to do the handbrake and main brake caliper, I'm going to bolt on the center drive spindle just to hold that the rotor in place. So I keep mixing those two up. Yeah. 
So these lug nuts are a particular lug nut that's supplied with the, the spinner kit or the spinner adapter kit. So they're actually quite narrow so that they fit inside. The, the wheel will slide over the top of them later. I think next I'll do the handbrake. So we've got the small handbrake caliper for that mounts to the rear of the brake rotor. Um, it's just cable driven, so we can install the cable later once I get to it. And um, it is adjustable so that we can adjust where that's positioned to line it up with the rotor. So we'll see how we go with the uh, alignment out of the box. That actually fits pretty good. That might need a very fine adjustment. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually hear that. But that the pads on that handbrake are just rubbing on the outside face of that rotor. Okay, I think I'll jump to the other side and really all we've got left is to install the main brake caliper. Um, and then I'll, I'm not sure if I'll put, install the brake pads just yet, noting that it's all going to come apart again at some stage. So these are the brake calipers. I'm told they're a Brembo. I might actually look up the model number that's stamped on them. Um, they are a four piston caliper and they've just been painted by the manufacturer with their logo. So I do have the brake pads here and the associated spring and the pins but I think I will just wait until final assembly to insert them just so that they're not getting fingers all over them and um, having to clean everything up all the time. So I'll put them aside for when that time comes. So it comes with a nice polished spinner. I'm just gonna throw that on for now. I'll jump onto the other side and finish off the other side and uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to help myself but I'll probably end up throwing the wheels on just to see how it all looks. Okay, so that's now the rear brake assembly and hub or bearing fitted to both the driver and passenger side of the vehicle. Now I haven't yet fitted off the flexible brake line here that I've installed a couple of episodes ago because these will be coming off again at some stage so I'm not at the point where I'm looking to actually fit that off and um, and look to bleed those lines but very happy that everything seemed to fit together as it should probably one of the simplest installs I've had so far. So that's it for this episode. Tune in to next episode where we'll be installing the front brake assemblies. If you like this, these videos, please hit the like button, share these videos with family and friends that may be interested, and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future releases. All right, I couldn't just end the episode there without showing you what it looks like with the wheels installed. So there they are, they sit out nice and wide. I do have the golf flared arches on my GT40.
So there they are. I think I'll probably have to start making a move on getting those centers painted orange, which is the look that I was going for. I think I might do that once I've got the front installed in the next episode. And then I can look at getting some tires and just about have a roller. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I'll see you next episode.